Hello, welcome to another video by Moxa Marine. In this video, I am uh, trying to um, uh, not repair, I'm trying to restore the cool fuel, uh, high pressure fuel system on a uh, Merc Cruiser 6.2, that engine right there. So it's called the Merc Cruiser, Merc Cruiser Cool Fuel, and uh, it's kind of hard to say that. Um, so I'm just gonna describe what's happening here. So your fuel inlet is right here. That comes from your fuel water separator. Uh, which is uh what do i do with it so there it is right here so it's the fuel water separator i'm having to take all these lines apart and clean them up as i go so your fuel inlet here it comes from your fuel water separator pumps out of the pump goes up into this fuel cooler this is basically a, a shell and tube heat exchanger gasoline comes in here goes out this hole here this is to this fuel line here and it goes up to your uh, the back of your fuel rail so you're looking at high pressure fuel from here all the way to the fuel rail with no return back to this point so inside this, this uh, heat exchanger is a cavity and your regulator mounts right here and the regulator's right here. This is the regulator that was screwed on there. And um, see, it must go like, uh, it goes like this, I'm pretty sure. So the regulator goes on there. That's the fuel outlet back to the fuel separator. So the way fuel injector works, high pressure fuel works, is that the pump pumps into here and the regulator maintains a constant, um, say 45 PSI in this tube and all 45 PSI all the way to your fuel rails on your engine. The regulator relieves that pressure or relieves the excess fuel and, and lets it go back to the uh, fuel, uh, fuel water separator. So your fuel water separator acts kind of like a little uh, miniature tank, storage tank. Um, the problem is that this regulator is rusted out. So you can see that the back of the shell of the regulator is rusted and that's, that will not work because this port here goes to the engine vacuum. So when you have vacuum, it pulls a little bit on it. There's a diaphragm in here and a spring. You can kind of try to see if we can show you the spring. See that spring right in there? So there's a spring in there pushing a the rubber diaphragm. And if you put vacuum on this regulator, it pulls, um, basically it allows the, it compresses the spring a little bit and um, increases, the, let's see, it, um, it decreases the pressure. So it decreases the pressure. And then uh, when the engine's at full throttle, the vacuum goes away and it increases the pressure. And uh, explaining why you need a regulator is uh, kind of out of the scope of this video. I'll explain it in another video later um, on fuel injection. But the bottom line is that the regulator maintains a, uh, a fixed supply of uh, fuel pressure to run your, your injectors. And uh, it's based, it's called vacuum reference fuel pressure. So, um, like I say, this is the outlet to the fuel rail to this hose right here connects in here. And all you do is you, un you unscrew this uh this threaded pin here, the pin slides out, up. You see it, I've slid it up. That fuel line slides in, and then when you push this, when you thread this back in, that screw engages with this little uh, rounded groove in the in the line and holds it in. So that's what keeps it, uh, that's what keeps the line in. It lets it spin, but it, uh, and the, the O-rings obviously is what keeps the pressure, keeps the fuel from spraying out. So that's your outlet on, up to your fuel rail. And then again, this is the inlet from the fuel water separator. And then the regulator has another outlet. Um, so this regulator has an outlet there, and that's what goes back to your fuel water separator. Um, the problem with this is that the, uh, the screw, and so it's also there's a hold down plate, this brass hold down plate um, goes here like so. Actually it goes like this. Yeah, it goes just like that. So this plate is what holds everything together inside this plastic housing. And in the case of this one, this the pins that held the, the uh, screws that held the plate on pulled out. This one cracked, and that one pulled out. Uh, well, actually, it was the uh, the nut was corroded, and I could not get it off. So um, as I was twisting it, just twisted twisted the bolt right out of the plastic housing. So to fix that, I drilled all the way through. I drilled through the uh, through the plastic housing. I'm gonna clamp it all together with um, with these quarter inch bolts stuck in from the back. It's got a shallow hex head. And it's going to stick in from the bottom down here like so. It's going to come out right there. And then that's what's going to hold it all together. And then the entire assembly, once you've bolted it together, so I'll have it bolted together. By the way, that's not stainless hardware. I'm going to go get, uh, this is temporary. I'm going to use this to hold it together. But I'm going to get some stainless hardware. These, these are two and a half inch long screws, quarter by 20 screws. I'm going to get stainless uh, screws and uh, nylock nuts to uh, hold it together uh, with the proper stainless hardware. Once you get the, the thing bolted together, then it bolts onto this 
metal, this is a metal uh, support bracket, and you can see it's kind of half eaten away with rust. <coughs> Excuse me. It's half eaten away with rust, so I, I cleaned it up, de-rusted it, and powder coated it to try to salvage it. Um, a lot of these parts are no longer available. You cannot buy, as far, I know you can't buy this metal piece here, so that's why I had to save it. Um, you probably can't buy this plastic housing. That's why I'm having to reuse that. You probably can't buy the regulator. I don't think you can buy the heat exchanger. You, I think you can buy the fuel pump. I, I think I know where you can get a fuel pump. But um, the rest of this part, the, the heat exchanger, the regulator, the that, the plastic, you can't buy it new. So the only place you can get it is maybe, a, there's a place called NLA Marine, no longer available Marine. Um, I don't know where they're at. I think they're in Wisconsin. And there's also a place called uh, Green Bay Prop. Those are two places that sell used uh, boat parts. And I bought a few things from myself. But um, for the most part, I'm going to try to salvage whatever I can and then uh, uh, save it and then uh, put it back on the uh, engine. As far as this regulator, what I'm going to do to fix it, I'm pretty sure I can't buy any. I'm going to put JB Weld all around here and seal this up. I'm going to brush it, wire brush it, clean it up best I can. And then JB Weld up this entire surface or this entire area here. Hopefully it'll seal up. And it'll start working again. Um, I've got some Viton O-rings I'll put in there. That O-ring was uh, dry rotted, so um, but I'll, I can, I've got my own O-ring kit, so I'll fix that. So hopefully the uh, J B will hold. Otherwise, uh, I'll have to rig up. I'd, there, you can buy an external regulator. So what could what could be done is uh, maybe if if that doesn't work, tap that hole with a one eighth inch uh, pipe pipe thread tap. Um, Put a, some kind of a, a nipple on it and then run the fuel line from that over to another a remote regulator and maybe put a regulator over at your uh, fuel water separator and then you can use that uh, the regulator like for example here's a regulator i was going to try to use this but it didn't work out this is off of a volkswagen bus a volkswagen bus uh, fuel injection system you see it's the same concept as vacuum reference I don't know what the fuel pressure is but it probably uh probably maintains about 45 psi most of the common most of the fuel injection systems back in the 90s and stuff, uh, the multi-ports, pretty much uh, maintained 45 PSI at full throttle and about 39 PSI at idle. So uh, I know the, the modern LS stuff is higher. It's about 57, 57 PSI. And um, anyway, so I don't want to get off the topic of that, but um, this is how you restore a uh, Mercruiser cool fuel. And uh, I'm about to put it all back together and see if I can mount it back on the engine. And then I'm going to put JB Weld on the regulator and remount it and then see if I can salvage the whole thing and make it operational. I hadn't even tested this fuel pump. I'm just counting on it working. It, I took it out, looked at it, cleaned it up a little bit. Everything looked, It didn't see a whole lot of corrosion inside the pump itself, so I think it's probably okay. It just needs, it, by the way, when you put 12 volts on it and it doesn't spin, just take a tool and uh, lightly tap on it. Sometimes the tapping will free up the brushes in there and it'll start working. That goes with any motor, any electric motor. If you're having trouble, it doesn't seem to want to turn, just take a, a depending on the size of the motor, like if it's a starter like this, you want to take a bigger a bigger hammer. But you tap on it, and the, those vibrations will sometimes jar the brushes and make it start working. So, uh, yeah, you, you actually can fix stuff with a hammer sometimes. All right, I'm going to go ahead and finish up uh, putting this all back together, and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done. Okay, as I was saying, I uh, attempted to repair this regulator with some JB Weld, and um, let me get a little close-up look of it. That's to uh, seal off the end of it, end cap, so it can hold a vacuum. I've already uh, put the regulator back on with a new uh, Buna N O-ring, and I've tightened up the, uh, well, I haven't tightened it up, I'm going to tighten this fuel return line up. And then I can uh, reinstall this uh, fuel system back on the uh, engine. So, um the cover will no longer, there's a broken piece right down here. So the cover, kind of a poor design, the cover snaps on with that lip or that little latch there and that latch there. And uh, as you know, plastic fatigues over time. So the cover no longer stays put. So I'm gonna hold it on there with wire ties, with uh, uh, releasable wire ties to uh, tie wires, whatever you call them, to uh, hold the cover on instead of the uh, clamps. So let me go ahead and get this thing remounted and uh, you know, put the, the cover on and uh, there's a rubber line that goes from this nipple here and goes back up and lands on the engine somewhere back here. I'll have to find out where it goes. Um, so 
down if I keep. Uh, I think it was right down there. Right, right there, right there. So that rubber line is vacuum for the engine. That's vacuum for your regulator. And that's what um, uh, varies, varies the uh, fuel pressure depending on engine load. So uh, I'm gonna buy a brand new rubber line for that. The old line is kind of dry rotted and cracked and brittle. So I'll buy a new line and tomorrow and uh, put that on. But uh, this engine's almost done, it's coming along. Um, all I have left to do is uh, once I get the uh, fuel system worked out, put the close, this has got a closed loop cooler. It's a big, huge uh, plate, uh, not plate frame, a huge uh, shell and tube heat exchanger fits up here. And this uh, circulates water through the shell and tube to cool the engines, closed loop. You can run antifreeze in these kind of engines. And then the raw water is pumped on the other side of the heat exchanger and just dumps back into the exhaust and goes out the boat. I much prefer this system, the closed system, to the open system. But, uh, the uh, open systems tend to destroy engines. The closed ones uh, will ke help keep your engine surviving. And um, so I have to get the closed system done. Then I will um, move on to the put the distributor in. And uh, that's not as complicated as I thought. Uh, once I get the distributor in, I'll... Uh, Take it off the engine stand, put the rear flywheel on, the flywheel cover, well, the flywheel flywheel and the, the coupler, drive shaft coupler, then the flywheel cover. And then uh, I have a separate rolling stand I use for running engines on, so I'll mount on that and run it and then um, deliver it back to the customer in a, in a running state. He's going to put it in himself, so I don't have to put it in, but uh, I'm going to deliver the motor running. Or I'll have video of it running. He won't see it running, but I'll video it so he can see what it's running. So, all right. Thanks for watching and uh, subscribe to my channel if you find my videos helpful and uh, good night.